Uh, the very first thing is that uh, if you are going to pass the button from whatever angle and place, you must be able to prepare your people and the young people more particularly. We have denied, this country has denied for more than 35 years, we have denied the young people information because we deny them the history that this nation has gone through. The subject history in schools is taught so lightly that they don't go deep in what our nation has really been. Mm -hmm. And instead of that, they are only touching on the service about what the system thinks will not pose challenge. Because if the young people know a lot, then according to them, they will may be destabilize mm -hmm. the administrations. That's number one. Number two, that's history. Number two is that political education has, has again been denied. So instead of offering our children the political education, mm -hmm. we are giving them what they call the government education. Now, government education simply means you know who your president is and the ministers, and almost uh, that's all. Mm -hmm. You know, what does that mean now? It means that the process of creating that president and the thinking behind organized government mm -hmm. is not there, you know, which means that the children are not provoked to thinking. Instead, they are simply led to receive information. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, is that you are supposed to have a very interactive young society, mm -hmm. that uh, you are going to have peer discussions, mm -hmm. that those young people from Alliance High School are supposed to visit one or two schools in some counties, mm -hmm. and they are able to tell them about the things that they go through in their schools, right. and for these others to tell them about what happens in their communities and regions. Mm -hmm. That is missing. Right. And so therefore, what I'm saying is this. If we want that our country grows, mm -hmm. then the generations coming behind us should be given the right information. And I really like what Joy said. Because you're saying this, mm -hmm. if you cannot be able to prepare people through giving them the correct history, mm -hmm. you have lost them. Right. And when you lose them, then you lose your society. Okay. What are you expecting to hear from today's address? One of the things that I hope the president is going to address is to call Kenyans to closer unity. We've seen in the, this last week there has been talk of even um, reconciliation attempts between him and his deputy, and also with the BBI report around the corner, you're expecting more talks about a national conversation and national unity. So I expect today there will be a rallying call from the head of state to Kenyans to reach out across the divide and to their brothers and to just see if we can turn a new leaf as it were. 2020 is a, is a year that has been very challenging. And we have gotten to a place where if we do not salvage the rest of uh, the remaining months, it might end up being a total washout as a year. So this is a time I would expect the president to just say, you know what, let us reach out across the divide and stand, uh, stand tall together as brothers to forge a better future for Kenya. Another thing that I, I do expect that is going to hint at is whether or not the release of the BBI is going to ha uh, as give a clearer picture of when the release of the BBI report is going to be. There's been a lot of talk about how it's around the corner and it is coming. So I expect he would try and just give us, even if not an exact date, but a, a very clear hint of, you know what, this is actually coming around the corner. Because of late, the, the, the conversation has been so much centered around the politics that people have forgotten what binds us together as a nation. But also, I expect him to put in a word to remind Kenyans of our everyday heroes, but also of our national heroes, because it is a day to celebrate heroes as it were. So it would be a shame if the day goes by without the president making a special mention of people who are worthy of note in our society. So I expect that also to have been mm -hmm. worked into his speech. Right, and for yourself, Honorable Kathango, so what are your thoughts on, um, yes, you know what has been going on in this country, yes, the yes. different conversations, the competing uh, political factions that are starting to form. Mm. So when the president addresses the nation as the head of state and symbol of unity, mm. what is that that you say you must hear from him? The very first thing is that 
uh, the president would be aware of several facts because today is a highly political day. Highly political in the sense that it is born out of people's struggle that this day is created as a national day. Mm -hmm. But some of the things that are happening in this country, including you know, that uh, the Chief Justice has just given an ad advisory. This advisory, in the eyes of the public, is almost an affait accompli mm -hmm. that uh, we are not supposed to challenge it. And I don't want to discuss it here so much because, you see, it is also reflected as uh, an issue that is subjudicated, mm -hmm. that it is before court, mm -hmm. therefore it should not be discussed much. But the issue is this that if there are no other applications in the high court, the president doesn't have any other respite but to dissolve parliament. That's number one. Mm -hmm. So our elections may be sooner than 2022. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two is that, and I know there is also another application before court, to say that the elections are supposed to be in the year 2021, not 2022, meaning that the interpretation of the Constitution mm -hmm. has been taken traditionally in the stand of constitutionally or legally. Meaning that if the court again made the decision and interpretation that the elections are next year August, then the elections could come faster or, or earlier mm -hmm. than traditionally expected. Meaning the president of the Republic of Kenya has an obligation to make sure that the country is peaceful and united before the elections. Mm -hmm. The country is peaceful and united now and not tomorrow. And Honorable Katango, it's interesting that you should uh, be speaking about the courts as we see the arrival of uh, Chief Justice David Maraga here oh. at the Kisi, uh, the Gusi Stadium. Of course, you yes. can see they're standing tall. Yes. Yes. And uh, he's, uh, of course, he's also facing some challenges at the Judicial Service Commission with them. Some of the members saying that the process of uh, picking the new chief justice should actually begin. Yes. But all the same, it's a matter that is uh, going on. The conversation is going on. And I'll be engaging you on what you just raised there about the, con the contentious issue about the um, election. Because as yes. uh, I, when you look at the constitution, it talks about the fifth year. So True. that should be 2020. I don't know why the conversation around 2021. But uh, one, Makori Ongechi is at the Kisi Golf Club. Uh, Makori, if you can hear me, uh, so what are you seeing there? Uh, very few minutes to uh, the start of the arrival of, um, well, unfortunately, have uh, lost Makori Ongechi, but let's get into what you just raised a few minutes ago, uh, that there's a um, contest of people that, say, that are saying the election should be in 2021. Why Correct. that? Correct. Because, because, and I am saying this because the president should be thinking about it. Because if he doesn't think about it and the high court says the other thing, then it means that he will be having a problem. All I'm saying is that the country must be united now and peaceful, not wait about tomorrow. And that this government should be ticking as one. That the government should not appear to be defined. That is his business. Mm -hmm. So that he continues to be the national peaceful symbol. Mm -hmm. Now, about the constitution. The traditional parliamentary and presidential term mm -hmm. in Kenya was and has always been five years. Now, the five years means that you have to finish five years before you get to the election, meaning that the election was always in the sixth year. Because you have finished five years, <laughs> so you go to the sixth year. And that is English. It is not about uh, anything else. Sixth year. Now, what the experts of the Constitution, the mm -hmm. ones that guided us to write the Constitution, did was actually to cut the American provision mm -hmm. and paste it for Kenya. You know? And they did not look at the meanings of in the fifth year and mm -hmm. in the sixth year. Because simply what it means is that in the fifth year, it's just about Hon about Katango, yet, the, yet the constitution says that um, a presidential term is five years no. and a maximum of uh, two terms. Um, Joy is still with us uh, via way of Skype. Uh, you hear what uh, one uh, Honorable Kathangu is talking about the presidential term, but be it as it may, we look at uh, the, the conversations around the gender rule, the dissolution of parliament, the BBI, uh, so much 
for a country to be dealing with at a time that you also have the pandemic that has really uh, left ravages, especially economically, and now that we have um, a spike in the numbers of what the authorities are warning, it could be the start of a second wave. How does a country deal with all these challenges, both economic and political, and also have to put up with a health crisis that is threatening not to go away? Now, uh, in terms of the advisory by the Chief Justice, there are various options that are open to the President right now. The first option would be to have the House Leadership uh, Committee, uh, the House Leadership of the Senate and the National Assembly to rally their members to come up with legislation to uh, give life to the provisions for the gender rule. Because the decision that, that is, uh, the Chief Justice was relying on was the decision that was given in regards to the 11th parliament. So the decision on the 12th parliament has not yet come out because I think it is still before uh, the constitutional court. So on that little technicality, you can say, look, I do not have to do this right now, but um, if the court's uh, decisions are anything to go by, there's going to be a declaration that the 12th parliament is not properly constituted and so needs to go home. So before that happens, go ahead and make things right. Mm -hmm. because the decision is based on the failure to pass legislation to give life to the the election rules so at the next election you have a realization of the gender rule so that said that is one option available to him the other option available to him is to thank the chief justice for his advisory and to, to put it in a shelf and just decide to ignore it one of the, uh, the issues with that is, of course, it is impunity. But at the same time, as you have said, there's so many things that the country is dealing with right now that, quite frankly, in the pecking order of what is urgent in Kenya right now, mm -hmm. dissolving parliaments would complicate rather than aid what Kenyans are really working on right now. But the third option that is available is what I think the president has done, is to wait and see what the courts say in regard to the various matters that have been tabled before the courts to challenge the decision. Mm -hmm. Now, in this particular instance, he, he's a little bit safe because he's not exactly acting out of impunity right now because there is a stay operational from the court. But at the same time, if the courts do not come back with a favorable decision, then he will be bound by the decision of the court to go ahead and hurry up with either dissolving parliament or coming up with some uh, 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 some legislation being brought in quickly to forestall that particular action. So the president has a difficult juggle at this point. And quite frankly, to be in his shoes right now would be a difficult thing. But that said, we have to understand that as a nation, we have had um, something that has eaten us. We keep uh, shelving uh, problems and waiting to solve them at a later date. And the further down the road that you keep kicking this can, eventually the, you run out of road, but you still have the can that you need to deal with. And that's what happening because when the Supreme Court talked about the gender rule, for example, it gave the then parliament, that the life of that parliament, to come up with a modality and said, you can implement this one, but progressively. Mm -hmm. Now they chose to take progressively to be, you know, forever and ever and that is not the case and so i think we need to come to a place where we stop putting cluster on our problems and just dealing with them decisively mm -hmm. that's the same problem we are seeing for example with the constitution of the iebc the the commissioners resigned over two years ago until now we've never taken it upon ourselves to repopulate the iebc so what happens if a dissolution must happen and we must go to an election and we have uh, an improperly improperly constituted iebc so this culture of we'll deal with this on another day this procrastination that we have as a nation is not serving us well and i think it's a culture that we need to change we need to start dealing with things decisively and on time and moving next, forward to the next thing, rather than um, choosing to say, you know what, we'll deal with that on another day, give it some time, leave it some time. And so I, I would that that culture, we would change it for uh, pro, uh, posterity because it is not something good that we're doing. And we realize that eventually it catches up with us right. and we end up in more trouble than what we, we have. Okay.
Pretty interesting views there from uh, Jem Devo. Again, uh, this is the 11th uh, Mashuja Day since the promulgation of the Constitution. There before it used to be uh, called the Kenyatta Day. And uh, so much has changed, including the celebration, the style, and the manner in which this is being done. I uh, Having to have all people attending such an event wearing their masks. Those are the live pictures from Goosey Stadium. Uh, we're waiting to see who is there. Uh, arriving because it's now 33 minutes uh, past um, 10 o'clock. Uh, this is the time that uh, the service commanders are supposed to be coming in, but it would appear that um, uh, the higher offices might be uh, on their way. Let's just see who gets out of there. And the deputy president uh, should be arriving, that is uh, William Ruto arriving for the start of the uh, ceremonies. I just want to take you through the program and how it looks like so that you know where we are at uh, this moment, a function that we are told is supposed to take just about one and a half hours because of the weather situation and also to ensure uh, that people are able to return to their uh, homes or wherever they came from uh, to avoid a lot of um, congregational crowding. Uh, so at um, 10.35, this is the time that the governor of KC County was supposed to be arriving, but already he is on the days. You see the deputy president arriving. He had been scheduled to arrive at 10.45, so they are ahead of time. And that means that any time from now, we should be in a position to see the state motor motorcade arriving at the Gusi Stadium, uh, depicting the arrival of uh, President Kenyatta and the First Lady as they come to officiate the um, 11th Mashu Jade. So you can see there are the speakers of the National Assembly and the Speaker uh, of uh, the Senate, as well as the Chief Justice, already there, uh, the wife of the deputy president, Ruto also um, into with the deputy president and uh, Honorable Kathang of course um, uh, looking at this someone might forget because of the conversation but someone might forget that you're celebrating the Mashuja Day and I just wanted to look at um, the Heroes Act uh, section 25 uh, subsection 1 that talks about a person declared a hero under this act shall be entitled to the following privileges among others and one of them is invitation to national and community functions as a state guest having cultural festivals or concerts concerts, exhibitions, and sports events organized in their honor, and having towns, institutions, open parks in urban areas, roads, streets, estates, stamps, and notable landmarks named after the hero. So in essence, it's just about recognition and um, keeping the memory yes, yes. of uh, these heroes even when they pass on. Mm. How have we done in honoring our national heroes since independence? Of course, uh, so many of them, uh, despite the struggle, there are so many others that in the modern um, phase of life. But how would you rate the country in honoring these uh, heroes and re recognizing them and keeping their memory in what you can remember? Extremely poor. There isn't anything substantial that, uh, that we can say that our government or governments have done to recognize the heroes.